When you think of fire starting, your mind probably jumps to matches, lighters, or those shiny modern ferrocerium rods. But what if I told you that a method first used by our Neanderthal cousins tens of thousands of years ago can outperform much of today's gear under the right conditions? This isn't just a neat archaeological fact. This is a living survival technique that can save you when modern tools fail, when rain soaks your matchbox, or when batteries die in your fancy ignition gadgets. And the secret isn't about luck, strength, or even skill. It's about understanding materials, friction, and the environment in a way that our ancestors perfected through countless winters and harsh landscapes. By the end of this video, you'll not only know the trick, you'll understand how to apply it today, whether you're hiking, camping, or preparing for an off-grid scenario. The Neanderthals mastered fire through friction and clever material pairing. Archaeologists have found clear evidence that Neanderthals weren't just stumbling through fire, they were deliberately controlling it. One of their most effective methods involved the hand drill and fireboard combination. By spinning a hardwood stick against a softer, slightly resinous board, they created concentrated heat at a friction point. That heat would ignite a small pile of charred tinder, often composed of dry grasses, bark fibres or resinous plant material. The process requires patience and attention to detail. It's not a reckless rub two sticks together fantasy. It's a precise, repeatable method that generates embers hot enough to light even damp tinder if prepared correctly. Modern survival kits often overlook this principle, relying on chemical sparks or magnesium shavings, which can fail in wet or windy conditions. Understanding materials makes all the difference. Not every piece of wood will work. Neanderthals instinctively paired hardwoods like oak or hickory for the spindle with softwoods like cedar or willow for the fireboard. This wasn't guesswork. It was trial and error over generations. In practical terms today, that means knowing your environment. If you're in a temperate forest, a dry willow board and an oak spindle can replicate the same effect. In a pine forest, you might choose a fir board with a harder local hardwood for the spindle. The key is density contrast. The spindle must be hard enough to generate friction, the board soft enough to absorb heat and create embers. Preparing your materials ahead of time, drying the wood properly and keeping the tinder finely shredded ensures that when you start, you'll succeed on the first attempt rather than burning hours trying to coax a spark. The ember is the real magic, and, well, knowing how to nurture it is absolutely essential. Creating a small ember is only half the battle, you see. Neanderthals understood that embers must be carefully transferred and nurtured. They would form a tinder nest, often wrapping dry grass or moss around charred material. Once an ember formed at the friction point, it was delicately dropped into the nest and blown gently until flame took hold. Today you can use the same approach. A small ember placed in a nest of fine tinder shielded from wind will ignite almost any natural material. For a modern survivalist, this is powerful. Even when matches are wet or lighters are empty, the principle remains the same. You can carry a small char cloth or cotton ball in a waterproof container as a ready tinder nest, combining ancient technique with a practical edge. Why this Neanderthal trick can outperform modern fire starting gear? Steel strikers, ferro rods, and flint lighters are convenient, but they all have weaknesses. Ferro rods fail when wet, lighters run out of fuel 
and batteries die unexpectedly. The friction-based method requires nothing but the right materials, patience and technique. It's slow, yes, but reliable. It teaches one of the most important survival principles. Don't rely solely on tools. Rely on knowledge of your environment and simple physics. By practicing this Neanderthal method, you gain skills that allow fire generation under almost any circumstance. And while it seems primitive, there is an elegance and dependability modern gadgets rarely match. You can practice this today to become a more resilient outdoorsman. Start small. Gather a hard spindle and soft fireboard. Collect dry tinder or prepare a char cloth. Begin practicing indoors or in a controlled outdoor environment to understand the technique and timing. Pay attention to hand pressure, spindle speed and tinder preparation. Over time, you'll notice that creating an ember becomes less about brute force and more about rhythm and technique. Once confident, try it in damp conditions, under leaves or in a light drizzle to test reliability. This is the real value. Training yourself to create fire in adverse conditions builds a survival skill set that modern equipment alone cannot provide. The lesson Neanderthals teach us is that skill can outlast technology. Fire is a basic survival requirement. Our ancestors knew that mastering the principles behind it, materials, friction, ember care, was more important than any tool. The same lesson applies today. In camping, prepping, or emergency situations, understanding these fundamentals ensures that you're not helpless if modern gear fails. By practicing the Neanderthal fire trick, you gain independence, confidence, and a deep connection to human ingenuity stretching back tens of thousands of years. If you found this guide useful, make sure to subscribe to Backyard Wisdom and share it with another history enthusiast or survival-minded friend. Mastering this technique isn't just a skill, it's a way to connect with our past while preparing for the future.